Contact with ETs is often portrayed as a frightening and traumatic experience. While contact can be scary, the truth is that many people report being healed by ETs. In fact, there are now more than 300 documented cases of UFO healings, and the cases stretch back more than 100 years and come from all across the planet. Preston Dennett, author of the landmark book, The Healing Power of UFOs, has been documenting and researching healing cases for more than 25 years, and is the world's leading expert on UFO healing accounts. And he joins us now. Welcome, Preston. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, topic, alien healing. It's one that doesn't get talked about a lot um, in the ufology niche, but I thought we'd, we'd talk about it today because it, it really does happen. Yeah, it's kind of surprising to me that it doesn't get more attention because I have to tell you, I've gotten files or cases like this from a wide variety of researchers like Bud Hopkins, David Jacobs, uh, John Mack, certainly, uh, cases all across the world. Most researchers have cases like these. Barbara Lamb, Yvonne Smith, I could go on. Uh, it's not uncommon. Yeah. Um, we, we, we hear of the, um, the miracles that are, that are often reported in, in healing cases. I mean, is, is there a connection with, with those? Uh, perhaps. I mean, I think there's a tendency to sort of a little bit of a bleed through in some of these cases. Could these be angels we're dealing with? Because uh, there's certainly a lot of literature on that. Uh, and uh, when a glowing figure enters your bedroom and heals you, uh, it can be difficult to interpret what exactly is happening here. Uh, so I imagine that some cases are interpreted both ways wrongly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. You talk about glowing figures appearing in, in, in your bedroom. So can you talk a bit more about that? Uh, yeah, I'd say that these healing cases sort of fall down into several major categories. About half, I found actually take place when someone's pulled on board a craft and has a sort of an examination and operation or procedure. Uh, but a good portion of cases, about a quarter involved with this sort of experience, what we call a bedroom visitation, uh, which is not uncommon. Uh, a number of healings do take place while people are driving or outside and they're struck by a beam of light. What really surprised me is about 10% of the cases actually take place in hospital rooms, inside a hospital. Uh, which surprised me at first, but if you look into this phenomena, visitations do occur pretty much everywhere in very crowded locations. Yeah, I just wanted to get, like you talk about hospital, hospital rooms, some, maybe some separation because a lot of near-death experiences report when they come back, they've been healed of um, whatever illness they had. It, it, again, is there some sort of a connection kind of happening there? Uh, yeah, I looked into that. You know, there was actually also a, a good hundred cases in the literature of people who've been cured as a result of a lightning strike. So there are parallels uh, to that as well. I do know about cases where people have had a near-death experience and been cured as a result. I've got some first-hand cases myself. Uh, so that's definitely what appears to be happening is people are being exposed to some sort of very high-level energy. Uh, I'm not sure that near-death experiences can be closely related to the abduction experience mm -hmm. uh, in a way that they're the same phenomena, wearing different masks even. I think we're dealing with completely different things. Uh, with near-death experiences, someone literally traveling to a higher dimension. And in some ways, that's exactly what's happening with an abduction experience uh, because these crafts do operate on that level and do you know, disappear. They can turn at right angles. They defy physics as we know them. I don't think they're actually defying physics. Uh, they just have an understanding of it and the ability to travel in, into these other dimensions. So what sort of illnesses are we talking about? I mean, it, like things like cancer? Yes, 40 cases of cancer. Uh, it's the most common specific illness that's cured, but really it's the entire, well, not the entire range, but very close. A wide variety of flesh wounds to you know, hands, arms, fingers, and so on, head wounds, uh, but not just flesh wounds and burns as well, but uh, minor illnesses like colds, flu, uh, stomach aches, back aches, like 15 cases of back aches, mm -hmm. bunch of cases of eye healings, uh, some dental healings, uh, and wow. really a wide variety of uh, serious illnesses, uh, which is very surprising. Cases like arthritis, uh, jaundice, 
diphtheria, tuberculosis, arthritis. I, th I believe I mentioned uh, really a, a surprising amount. Tuberculosis, right. mus muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. uh, mul multiple sclerosis. <laughs> You've done you've done a lot of research on this. How far back have have you gone to uh, confirm that healings were taking place? Uh, there are some very early cases. They're hard to verify, of course, uh, and tend to have less information. But they, they do seem to stretch back at least a hundred years. There's a very early case of a gentleman who was cured of tuberculosis, and at the time he kind of interpreted it as an angelic thing, until you know, the later 70s, I believe it was, when images of gray aliens came out. And he's like, well, that's what I saw. You know, it was very much the interior of a UFO, as, as was described in the media. He's like, well, that's exactly what I saw uh, back mm -hmm. when he, you know, this was like 1913, I believe, one of the earliest cases. Wow. Uh, but g generally, there, it was the 1950s and 60s and 70s when a lot of these cases occurred, and since then. Yeah. Does your research show that people just get chosen at random? Uh, sort of. Yeah, it's pretty evenly divided between men and women. There are cases involving very young children, um, elderly people, to all over the world. Didn't find a whole lot of patterns. I found some. Uh, if you have a history of these encounters, certainly with yourself or in your family, uh, that's about 50% of the cases involve that. So that's certainly a factor. Uh, other than that, no real pattern. I did perhaps one, find that a lot of people who are having this experience, healing, uh, are doing good work for humanity in some capacity. And by that I would mean social workers or police officers or doctors, um, teachers, uh, entertainers, police officers. I mean, this sort of thing. And it's kept turning up. I remember, I interviewing a lady from Norway who was describing how she had a back injury and Grays came into her bedroom and quickly healed her on her back very quickly. Wow. She had no prior UFO experience before or since. Scared her pretty bad, except immediately after it occurred, she was fine. And uh, I'm like, well, what do you do for a living? She says, well, I'm very active with social activism and human rights and animal rights. I'm like, well, there's that pattern again. Yeah, yeah.